International Hobby Corporation, or IHC, made quite a name for itself in the 90s and early 2000s, selling inexpensive, smooth-running HO scale steam locomotives. What made them interesting, and rather unusual, was that almost every product in the IHC catalog had previously been sold by somebody else, including this one, the USRA 462 Light Pacific. The prototype was a standardized design used by numerous American railroads, and several manufacturers have made HO scale models of it, but to my knowledge, this was the first plastic one to be mass produced. Like most of IHC's locomotives, these were actually manufactured by Mahano in Slovenia, but they were rarely sold under that name in the US. I spent probably more time than necessary searching through online archives and old magazines, trying to find out which company originally sold this model, and all I've been able to conclude is that pretty much every model train company under the sun has sold it at one time or another. The same boiler shell was also used for a 282 Mikado, and both that and the Pacific appear in IHC's 1993 catalog. They didn't even bother changing the road numbers. However, from what I've seen, the Pacific version has been around a lot longer. I found it in a 1981 Model Power catalog, and another listing for the Model Power version in an AHC catalog from the same year. I also found it in a 1979 AHM catalog. AHM was the company that eventually became IHC, and they mostly imported Riverasi models from Italy, including all the other locomotives on this page, but evidently they briefly sold this engine before Model Power did. So we've already proven that the Pacific predates this, the IHC 260 that I reviewed recently. That was first released by Pemco in 1980. We know the Pacific dates back to at least 1979, but that's not all. I found an ad for the very same Pacific in this. This is the December 1973 issue of Model Railroader magazine. And if we look on page 28, there it is being sold under the Lifelike brand. So I'm in the middle of editing this video, and while looking for pictures, I just found this web page, which says that the Lifelike Pacific was introduced at the 1973 Chicago Hobby Show, and that it was a new product for them. So I think it's very likely that that model railroader ad was in fact the first appearance, and that this model did originate from Lifelike in 1973. There it is, in fact, in the original box. It appears again in the 1975 Lifelike catalog, but not in their 1977 catalog, so that must be when AHM took over selling it. From all this, we can draw two likely conclusions. First, this model was sold by Lifelike from 1973 to 1976, AHM from 1977 to 1980, Model Power from 1981 to 1992, and IHC from 1993 onwards. And second, I have way too much spare time. Now, you might be wondering how I'm so sure that all of these are the same model. Well, most older model trains have particular quirks and features that distinguish them from other models of the same prototype, and this one is no exception. There are two main spotting features of the lifelike AHM Model Power IHC HO Scale USRA Light Pacific, or the LLAHMMP IHC HOSUSRLP for short, or the Lampachosis Route for even shorter. I guess now I have something to say if someone ever asks me what my favorite dinosaur is. One spotting feature of the Lampachosis Ralp is the handrails, which were molded into the boiler until the late 90s, when it finally got actual metal handrails. The later version, rather hilariously, still has the molded on handrails underneath the separately applied metal ones. On all versions, there's a gap in the molded on handrails where they cross the sandpipes, which isn't there on the prototype or any other models. The other spotting feature is these little protrusions on the top and bottom of each side rod bearing. They're supposed to represent the greasing points on the real thing, but since these rods are made of stamped metal, they're just little square tabs. On this model, they're massively oversized, making it quite easy to identify even in blurry photos. Both of these spotting features also apply to the Mikado version. Here's another tidbit I found while editing. Uh, Lifelike also originated the Mikado version, but much later, in 1987, which means that Lifelike was making the Mikado at the same time that other companies were making the Pacific. Interesting. While the motor and drive mechanism were incrementally improved throughout the years, the external appearance seems to have changed very little, except of course for new paint schemes, from the plain black ACL to the beautiful southern green to the whimsical daylight to whatever this cursed paint explosion was supposed to be. Nothing against the Jesse system or fantasy paint schemes, but if you're going to design one, at least put in more effort than just holding up three paintbrushes next to the train as it goes by. Speaking of paint, you may notice that my example looks quite different from any of the catalog pictures, and that's because I've done a lot of custom paint work on it. 
This is what it looked like originally, a plain black Canadian Pacific version. And while I decided to keep the lettering, I wanted it to look a bit less drab and boring. So I took inspiration from real Canadian Pacific passenger engines, and gave it a grey boiler, red cap trim, and of course white walls. I masked and spray painted the boiler, then painstakingly hand painted all the individual pipes and trim on the firebox, cab, and running gear. This was a very long and frustrating process of trial and error, and I absolutely do not recommend trying it. However, after a final spray coat of satin clear, I'm very happy with how it looks. It certainly looks better than some of the factory paint schemes. So we've covered the history of this model, we've compared versions, we've harshly judged paint schemes, and we've even given it a silly nickname. But what we haven't done is actually review it. So let's do that now. It's fine. It's a perfectly decent little engine. It's not the most detailed, heck, the cab doesn't even have an interior. It's not going to win any fine scale modeling awards, but what it does do, and it does very well, is run. The slow speed control isn't amazing, but it's no worse than some of the much more expensive models I've had. Once it gets moving, it's a very strong smooth runner, and it doesn't give two flying crepes about rough track, heavy loads, or careless handling. Even installing a DCC decoder wasn't too hard, which is amazing for a model that predates Starsky and Hutch. They're still a great option for cheap, solid, reliable motive power. That said, people do charge too much for them sometimes, especially on eBay, but if you find a good deal, I'd say under 70 or 80 bucks, I highly recommend grabbing one, since they won't be around forever. it up. I bought this thing for a project that I didn't end up using it for, and I hadn't even planned to make a video about it, but while I was test running it and tinkering with it, this antiquated little dinosaur charmed its way into my heart. It's not going to replace my Spectrum engines, but for a model that will be 50 years old in a few months, it's a darn fine piece of equipment. There are a few changes I still want to make, like adding a cab interior and replacing the bell, but for now I'm having too much fun with it to care, and that's about the best endorsement I can give a hobby product. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll see you next time.